Hey guys, welcome back. Orbomb here, bringing you another episode of our PTCGO live content. We are opening on a weird screen today, but it's fine. Um, today, to people, today we're going to be playing some spread. Uh, I do like playing spread a lot. I think we uploaded a spread vi video a couple of weeks ago, but today we're doing some Weavile spread. Uh, well, more it's more along the lines of Evil Admonition, but before we get into the video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, share all that good jazz. Let me know what your new favorite archetype is uh, in this post rotation meta after we had that special event like Rayquaza Vicavolt did really well um what else, what else did well like I can actually look it up real quick because the main reason why I wanted to play this Weavile deck is because in theory it actually beats all the decks that did really well in this special event that happened recently so we actually I, I mean you guys can't see it but it's fine don't want you just just take my word for it I know first place made it was Rayquaza Vicavolt second place was uh Magnazone, Duskmane, then we had another Equaza Vicavolt, Zoark decks, Vicabulu, more Zoark decks, Malamar decks, Hoopa decks, more Malamar, more Vicavolt, more Metagross, more. Everything has insane amounts of abilities that we can completely abuse, and that's where Evil Admonition comes into play. It's 50 damage for each ability that your opponent has on the board. And since these decks are so rampant with abilities right now, since so there's no ability lock, Weavile really does do well. There was no sign of Buzzwell either. So I'm currently not going to be teching for Buzzwool, um, because Buzzwool is kind of like without strong energy, uh, without, and with the fact that you can whiff B strings, it has been proven that Buzzwool is actually getting a lot weaker, a lot more weaker than I was expecting it would be. Well, but you know, Buzzwool, I still think Buzzwool is good, but like right now it's not in the top 32, so we're not going to tech for it. So I'm not playing the Oxus today, but yeah, uh, I think. That's everything for the video. Don't forget to answer the comment question today. Drop a like if you haven't already. You guys killed it with the Gumi and the Glaceon support. You guys are the absolute best. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over the video. Now, I'm gonna play be playing a split of Oranguru because every time I play like decks, I play only special energies. I like to make sure I have an Oranguru here uh, for resource management. We also have the Instruct one. Psychic is a good attack too. You can capitalize on people that over that overextend on their energies. So that's pretty nice. But the main star of the show are the Sneasels and the Weavile. Well, Sneasel's pretty cool. If you go second, Sneaky Smash can actually put your opponent behind a whole turn, which is really nice. And Ambush doesn't matter. But it does have 70 HP. We're playing this one over the Flippy one. We will be playing the Flippy one soon, though, guys. <laughs> Don't worry about that. That's coming back. And we're playing three of the Evil Admonition one. It does have a one retreat cost. The other one has the other ones are free retreat cost. But it does do the it does have the potential to Oko, which is kind of what we want to do. Put things in a range and then Oko them. Uh, we also have Icy Wind. And we play we play a one of of our rule of evil. Rule of evil is really kind of one of those attacks that you want to get off maybe once a game. Put everything in range. Um, it has free retreat, which is nice. But you mainly want to use rule of evil. The problem with using it too many times is that you have both Oranguru and Lele in your deck, so you want to avoid playing uh, rule of evil if you can most of the game. But it's it's a nice hit whenever you really need to add damage on the board. Uh, I found that in the blue matchup in particular, when they play, because most of the time they have to play down their Leles. So whenever they play down a Lele and their Vicavolts, you rule of evil one time, that's going to be more no, more than enough damage most of the time for you to use magical swap for big knockouts, which is kind of the goal of rule of evil. Um, you just spread a bunch. The blue matchup is a little bit tough because they can heal off their one Bulu one time. And then uh, from there, it, it is kind of, rough to knock out the bulu but if you do early game spreading you can probably bring it back from behind fairly easily with magical swap here move any number of damage counters on your opponent's pokemon to their other pokemon anyway you like we are playing counter energy we also play energy lotto excuse me we also play energy lotto so it should be easier enough to get our counter energies to be able to abuse magical swap mid game late game all the good jazz side wave is good for Rayquaza with a choice bend you do take an oko and we are playing the unit energy so that is pretty nice as well uh, we are playing one ba uh, baby buzzwell with sledgehammer the sledgehammer turns are nice other than that like with a choice band you are hitting dark week things for 120 so that's pretty uh, that gx is of course and then combine that with um shrine of punishment turns and you should be able to take knockouts with buzzwell also it's 130 hp which is really nice because zoark has a rougher time knocking you out. They have to have their devoured field if they play them. And we're playing three Cocos. Had to cut it down to three just because deck space is pretty tight in this deck. But Flying Flip is the main attack you're going to be using early game. Just putting things in range, adding a bunch of damage to the board, all that good jazz. So that's as far as the Pokemon line goes with two Lele's, that's it. Lele is also good too because Energy Drive can really 
take knockouts in some particular matchups. Like sometimes Boos just don't discard their energies because of they don't need to. They can Oko everything without discarding them except for Buzzwell. So you can come in and with a DC hit them for 100, 130 with a choice ban. And after a couple shrine turns, that can be a knockout, which can also win you the game. I found that sometimes I play game, I play Lele down late game in a Bulu matchup just to, uh, just to take a knockout. So that's pretty nice. Now I will say that I haven't played too many games of this deck. I played, I built this deck this morning, played three games with it, found that like I like it. Like the main reason why I'm playing this is because a lot of people want to have a re an answer to their uh, to their vicar to their vicar ray problems, and this seems like a pretty decent answer because vicar ray is all abilities. There's not much they can do that isn't an ability. So having Eva Admonition, or not, it, this one, this one, having Eva Admonition is really good for that matchup. So I figured I'd upload this deck list for you guys have a basis to work off of. Remember, this is a deck list though, you guys have a basis to work off of. You don't have to copy my deck exactly. I know some people uh, like other options more than others. Uh, of course, like always, I will always answer qu comments. I will always answer questions in the comments down below. I get, um, uh, sorry, I got a message. I get a lot of messages that ask me why am I not playing this? Why am I not playing that? Sometimes I forget to mention why I'm not playing particular cards in a deck. Uh, I'll always answer them in the comments down below. You guys are always great. Thank you. Moving on. Counter catcher. I was playing two, had to cut down to one. There's a huge problem with like space in this deck list because I, I do want to play a lot of stuff, right? So it's not like, it's not like, it's not like an issue with the deck itself. It's just because I'm so greedy, <laughs> but we are playing, um, one counter catcher it just really does have help you get good swing turns two lottos because in this deck if you ever whiff energy it does kind of put you a turn behind which is never that great so we are playing two lottos two escape ropes escape rope i love in this deck just because we do play uh tapu coco so we can always move back to our attacker and acts like as a pseudo switch pseudo switch cards with our heavier pokemon uh we have four nest balls standard stuff well standard for me at least one rescue stretcher to get our pokemon back four ultra balls standard stuff there uh four shrine of punishments you definitely want to get your shrines as soon as possible even though they are dead cards throughout the rest of the game having shrine down if your opponent doesn't bump your stadium ever is really really good just you want to add up the damage as much as possible so the lele can come in i was originally playing two leles and was actually playing the psychic lele as well i once again cuts have to be made i i figured that since you can take knockouts without using this lele if you if you really need to get them off the prizes it's pretty unlikely that it'll be the very last prize so at the very least you have an op you can get leles by taking prizes throughout the game as well so i, I figured i'd just cut down to one and well and, and you know who knows maybe as i play the games i'll figure out what else i want to cut what else i want to add that's happened to me a lot like i was playing enhanced hammers earlier but i had to cut those out entirely i figured evil admonition would be enough um and like this deck when i first built it had like 75 cards you guys have no idea how many things i wanted to play uh one copycat it acts like a fifth Cynthia and draw support's pretty good. Four Cynthias, uh, four Guzmas, two Judges. Judge is really strong, um, especially in a deck like this where it's all about disruption. And two Lilies, like, eh, I don't really see a reason to play Apricorn Maker, to be honest. I'd rather just play Lily as my turn one supporter. Plus, Lily's just good throughout the game. Two Choice Bands. I really want this to be at least three. Couldn't find space for a third one. So maybe I'll cut a Lily, but I want to make sure I have at least nine draw supporters. Like, you can even count Judges as a draw support because you do play a Rangu that can help you get out of like, low hand sizes if you need to. Uh, two counter uh, energies, cut it down to two. <laughs> a counter energy is not as useful as the DCE or the unit energy, so I cut that down to two. Uh, four DCE and four units. I can actually see myself cutting this down to three and making this three as well, but for the time being, I'm going to make it like this. But that's going to be the deck list, guys. Let's go ahead and find ourselves a couple of games. Hopefully, we can find like nothing but Rayquazas. <laughs> All right, guys, we found a game. This took forever to find one, but it looks like we're playing against Rayquaza, so that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good for us. As long as we can set up our board, we should be pretty okay. It shouldn't be that hard to set up our board either. Let's see if we go second. I know some of these Rayquaza's deck likes, likes to go second because you can just Tempest uh, early, but we did lead with Coco and with Sneasel. We have Ultra Ball. We have Unit Energy, but we don't really have anything else that's amazing, so... If he plays down too many Rayquazas, we can just literally go in with our, with our Sneasel. Excuse me. Alright, he did lead Lele, which is really good for us. Oh, excuse me. Oh, that was a lot of sneezing. Alright, so I think I'm, this turn, I'm, I, it's probably my best interest to just play down DC and attack with Coco. And then try to get as many Sneasels on the board as possible. But unfortunately, I, have, I am going to be forced to play down a Lele because I'm kind of stuck. So, we'll see what happens here. 
Let's see if he's playing. Okay, he is playing Grubbin. So I, I saw him like Mystery Treasure and he's in there. So he has two, two abilities on the board, so that's already 100 damage. Obviously, he's going to eventually have Rayquaza. So as you can see, this matchup is just kind of in our favor, which is really good. So we're going to do our best here to, you know, <laughs> just win. But we have to draw well. And that's what matters. Now, the other question is, am I going to play... Am I going to put down this DCE or am I going to not? I don't think I play Rule of Evil in this matchup just in general. I think I can take four prizes just off like the Rayquazas and Lele's alone. So I am don't think I'm too worried about... About... um. Nice. Yeah, I don't think I'm too worried actually. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Lily. Because I can keep the unit energy in my hand. Uh, so we're going to Lele Lily here. And that way I can also play down this DC and do some spread. And hopefully we can find Shrine. The sooner we can find Shrine, the better. Because that way he doesn't... Because the main reasoning, right, is even though you take a bunch of Okos early game, eventually he just gets rid of all of his abilities on board. and uh, Or gets rid of a lot of abilities on board. And then you're only hitting for like 100 damage. Or maybe uh, maybe 150 and you're not taking knockouts. Obviously Choice Bank can. But uh, with the Shrine of Punishment and spread damage, you can get away with a lot of different plays. So... That's going to be what we try to go for here. I know that our Lele is going to be weakened, but, like, who cares? <laughs> We're going to be weakened regardless. He's most likely going to Tempest. Actually, he might just take Knockouts because it's low HP stuff, so. But look at that. Now everything is in range of 150. So as long as he continuously has three energies on board, we take Knockouts. Uh, we have two Sneasels down. We want to get more Sneasels down next turn uh, because we want to streamline these Weavals. We have three in the deck, so we want to make sure we get all three Evo Admonitions out this game. Uh, we can do that. We have Guzma as well, so we can actually take a knockout on the Pokemon with the, with the energies first. I'm assuming this turn he's gonna just uh, strong charge onto like his Lele for retreat and probably his other Lele. Uh, another thing I would do if I was my opponent is I would start charging up a Vicavolt because Vicavolt seems like a decent attacker in this matchup. But even so, like you discard energies and I'm still gonna take a knockout on you at some point, so. And he's going to Guzma. He's going to get rid of a Sneasel. So we have to get as many Sneasels down as we possibly can. And he's going to Marsh Shadow me. So that's really good for my opponent and not for me. So I have to draw well, <laughs> which is not good. But this is what I mean. Like, even if you're in this weird, awkward situations, you can still win just based off, like, Coco spread and Shrine spread as well. Because look at that. Like, his whole board is going to be taking consistent damage. We can't Copycat, but we can Cynthia. We can also put a Choice Band on this. I don't want to, but I really need to draw more Sneasels and uh, more Weaviles. Uh, Nest Ball is another Sneasel right there. Um, yep. We have all of our Sneasels in the deck too, which is good. So that'll be helpful. We'll go ahead and just Cynthia here. Oh, I should have attached. My bad, I forgot. Uh, that was that was really bad, actually. Um, yeah, we'll just land it though. It's okay. Uh, no, we did not land it. We have the other one though, so it's okay. Give it to me. Come on. Counter G works. <laughs> I was about to freak out, but Counter Energy works this turn. We actually whiffed all of our unit energies, though, which is kind of crazy. Which one can we evolve? Okay, good. Got to make sure that we can evolve them first. Uh, we have Guzma, which is good, I guess. No, we'll just take our knockout here. He has five abilities on the board, so we're literally just going to Oko everything. Uh, Evo Admission for Knockout. And this will give me prizes, and ideally these prizes will make my board state smoother because i don't want to be i don't want to play down this lele like i really don't want to play down this lele but i might actually have to play down this lele if he charges up his own leles to attack me i can actually attack with my own lele because my event my eventually my lele will be knocked out so it's like whatever but if he charges this one up with like a bunch of energies i can actually take a knockout with my lele in return i think with shrine damage and my own lele damage i'll be able to win because we're, we're just we're in a prize rush right now we're just trying to we're just trying to go as fast as we can he's only hitting me for 60. I thought he would attach them both here to take a knockout on Weavile. Is he just not going to do it? Because that, that would have been... I guess... No, because counter energy is like no longer active. So it only counts as one energy right now. Uh, was he thinking... Even if he did only think it was counting as two, he would still need to attach here. Did he manage to attach return? Is that what he's thinking about? Or did he realize he made a misplay? I won't be able to attack with this next turn because I don't have... Yeah, I think he realized he made that misplay. Anyways, as you can see... The matchup is really skewed in our favor, and that's the kind of the point, right? You want to beat the ma the best decks in format, so you can you can see how you can obviously beat Malamar because Malamar will be playing behind because they never want to play down their abilities anyway, and you can see how we can uh, how we beat that deck, which is the quote unquote best deck in format right now. Um, what are the decks? Do I still have them this open? I don't. All right, that's fine. Uh, this is 
pro oh this is gonna be that dusk main deck i think i don't know what the dark in darkness pokemon is um but i know there's a deck that plays like rimbombi magnezone and dusk main so that could be that's a deck i really want to play actually <laughs> so you might see that on the channel as well uh lead sneasel is not like super great sonic coco but it's fine our board is looking kind of like oh man this hand is looking really rough though i'm not gonna lie this hand is looking super rough hopefully we draw out of this I don't like use I don't like losing both my units and my DCE and like oh, there's so many good things in my hand I don't want to ultra ball them. Cartana down. Oh man. Mm. That's an ability down which is good for us I guess. Uh, I think we have to Lily and we have to drop Choice Band in this. We can't lose our energies because that puts us pretty behind. Uh, I think I'll put down another Coco or another Sneasel. We'll drop. I hate dropping the choice band. We only play two, but I'd rather not drop my energies. I will get Lele down and we'll play we'll play Lily this turn, I think. He shouldn't be able to knock me out next turn, so I am gonna just play down my unit energy now. And yeah, because that could also be a retreat option for me later. I will play down. Another thing that sucks about this is that I can't rule of evil, which is why I'm only playing a one of rule of evil as well. Because uh I want to make sure that I have more options to rule of evil. The reason why I'm Lilying is because we're gonna draw six regardless. And it's better to have uh, energy in our hand anyways. And this gives us a free shrine. That's this. And we can put down another Sneasel. Is that what I want to do? I think so. I don't know what the matchup is yet, actually. So I think I'd rather just play down another Coco. Yeah, I can I can hold off on the Sneasels, but Cocos are always good. I think that's what I want to do. Because I don't know what my opponent's playing. If he's playing Spread, how good is that for us? I mean, if he's playing Magazone, I think Cocos are just better in this matchup, if that's the case. They give me a consistent free retreat. I can always be spreading. This is going to be really good later. Um, could we have a... Uh, yeah, we can't attack on our first turn. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Let's see who my opponent's playing. There's an enhanced hammer, so I guess that's fine. He has that now. <laughs> He's in a blade. Cool. Uh, well, we can hit him for 50 if we draw out of this. This also activates our counter energies, which is really funny. Uh, we can't play Buzzwell down yet. I guess we can just play it down for the sake of playing it down. We can get rid of his energy. No, we can't actually. Mm, maybe that wasn't the best play. We'll play this Buzzwell down just to get it out of my hand, and we'll Cynthia here. If he takes a knockout next turn that isn't on this, we do. Uh, ooh, we whipped. That's pretty annoying. But we do get this down. And we'll just ambush. And get tails. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Let's just put him in range of like 50 damage, right? That's the goal. He takes a knockout, we win the game. If he doesn't, if he doesn't uh, play down another Pokemon, which he does. Okay, never mind. Apricorn Maker. I was considering playing Apricorn Maker, but I just haven't had any issues getting down my Pokemon yet. I'd rather just draw a bunch and then find my Nest Balls, to be honest. That's my problem with Apricorn Maker. Like I'm playing it in Zoark because it feels it feels better in Zoark than any of the deck because it's easier to get it out in Zoark and you can you want to get down your Zoarks as soon as possible every single time. Until we get that Professor Elm card in a couple months, we months we should be able to. I think Apricorn Maker is fine as a one of or a two of in that deck. He's playing Zoark, so is he he's playing Zoark Metal, Zoark Magnezone. Is he playing Zoark B Strings? Oh, he's gonna shuffle himself back in while taking a knockout. That's really good for me because that means I get to take a. I get to do a buzzle thing this turn, which is good. And everything is in range of it, so I will gladly... And th then he can't... He probably can't take a knockout the following turn either, so that's really good for us. Now, the question is, do I Guzma? I think I do, because knocking out this Lele is kind of worthless. We also get to play down a Rangru, which is really good for us. Uh, Judge is not as good. I'd rather knock out the Zoarks if I can. Actually, then again... Because he can't take a knockout next turn... If I let him evolve one of these into Zoark, well then again, if he fills up his bench, that could be problematic. I am just going to Guzma. I'd rather not have, let him have Zoarks out this game. That also keeps us in counter energy range, which means I can actually attach this swing. I can attach and swing around the following turn as well, which could be really nice. We'll go ahead and do this. We'll Sledgehammer for knockout. The swing around is really cool, which is another reason why I didn't bother playing uh, Diancie in this deck, because you will have turns where you will be able to use swing around, and choice ban means that if you even if you land only tails, uh, you should still be able to take a knockout on all Zoarks. You'll hit 110 with a choice band. And there's a Zoark. 
uh let's see ideally i top deck a judge best case scenario because i'm kind of stuck in the active here i do take another knockout um and i don't i mean he is playing devoured field Ooh, what is this is that a rainbow that is a rainbow and trying to punish him it's going to be putting in the work too no top decks i see how it is game <laughs> don't want to help your boy out I, I get it i understand touch a dc here for the time being uh we could just judge We're getting all of our energies, bro. We're only playing like eight energies in this deck or 10 energies, I guess. But like, that's kind of crazy. The Sledgehammer turn. We can just abuse Sledgehammer for a little bit. And like I said, if we can find our counter energies and he does somehow manage to take a knockout next turn, we can just come in. Uh, we can come in with a, ideally a counter energy and just hit this man for knockout because now we don't even need choice band. Actually, we still do, but um, it's less it's less necessary now. We only have two abilities in our entire deck if you don't count two Lele's down. So we should be okay. Revile's no problem for us. He's gonna leave this active, so he's really gonna try to find that devoured field. Oh, enhance hammer works too, actually. That's problematic. Uh, but he needs to find devoured field if he wants to take a knockout. Uh, he also needs to find an energy card. <laughs> that, that could be useful. I mean, this is why we play the Lottos. Because the cool thing about Lotto, not only does it help you get another energy, it lets you, if you find like multiple energy, how, what do you do? Oh, you just play cards on Okay. If you, if you find multiple energy, is there, there's nothing you can copy, uh, so we're safe. If you find if you find multiple energy, you can actually choose the one you want for that particular turn. And then we get to go ahead and take another knockout here, so... <laughs> Buzzwell proving it's worth right now. I was playing two originally, I had to take one out. Uh, well, Lotto first? Well, there's no Pokemon I want to grab. I, I could thin, but I don't want to thin any of these cards. We whiffed! That sucks! That's actually really bad that we whiffed. Um, I can't attach return. I do think I have to lose a DC here. No, I can't do that either. Wow, this is actually really bad for us. I'm not going to lie. I have to get lucky. Let's see if I can get lucky. I can't get lucky. Ooh, that's like super bad. I want to preserve my Buzzwool. So I'm going to retreat it. Yeah, I can't, I can't let my Buzzwool be knocked out here. I was, I don't know how good Rule of Evil is this matchup, so I'm actually going to toss it, and I'm going to draw. I'm probably going to get down another Sneasel. Actually, I'm going to draw first off of Ranguru, because I need a draw supporter, so we're just going to do this. And that's another Shrine, so that's not useful right now. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, ideally he doesn't take a knockout on me. If he does, that means that my counter energy is live as well, so I can find both units and counters. But units won't do as much anymore because I'm only hitting for 60, which is kind of bad. Let's see what happens. He does have two abilities down. If he plays down more Pokemon, that's three abilities. Evil Admonition can still put in the work. Uh, it is, I was just gassing up the energy lot of two and I actually whiffed. There's already three unit energies gone though, so I might actually have to just attack with a Ranguru this upcoming turn. If I can't get anything else. I'm going to have to play down to the Ranguru and shuffle back in those unit energies though. I already lost three. That's really bad. That's really bad. That's like super bad. He takes a knockout now if he gets one more Pokemon. There, there we go. Uh, our evil admonition can still put in the work though. We still hit this man for 100. If he plays down to like a Lele or something, that's 150 and that's in range. But we have to find either counter or unit and we've already lost uh, three units. So we only have three energies at most in our deck that we can actually use. He is playing down another Lele. I'm assuming it's for Guzma. Uh, I don't really know what you Guzma this turn, though. I guess you can get rid of Evil Admonition, which is pretty safe. But then what do you attack with? Because you have to retreat as well. This, I'm assuming he has an energy, actually. Oh, he's just going to Acerola to pick up his uh, thing. Okay, that's pretty good. That still puts only two energies on the two, two abilities on the board. Uh, but this turn, we can do it if we find it. We have to get lucky. We have to play down this Oranguru. As much as I would love to play down another Sneasel, this Oranguru is like too important to not play right now. And I can't attach energy for the turn until I know what I'm going to play, and this is just not helping at all. Um, no, I think we have to just bite the bullet here and just attack with Oranguru. I think we actually have to just do that. We'll instruct here, and then we can Ultra Ball next turn. We can honestly just Ultra Ball this turn. Ooh, Counter Catcher is really good for this turn, actually. We can pull up a Blade. He's going to Acerola anything though we can force the energy attachment for retreat and pull this up 
I don't know how good that feels though. I think no matter what, we have to attack with this. We have to. We, we don't want to Ultra Ball this turn because we want to Ultra Ball next turn for shuffling. I'm just trying to think of like who is my best attacker here. This is definitely not best in the active because we'll get knocked out. So I'm, I the only thing I can do is I know he has Ace Rolla, let's pull up that Sneasel. And we'll just go ahead and resource management. We'll put back those three energies. One, two, three. How many energy how many draw supporters are gone? We still have three Cynthia's, we should be fine. And a judge. We should be okay. In hindsight, maybe I shouldn't put back those three energies. I probably should bet it's something else. Um, this Lele is going to be proved to be demise. I was thinking about putting Ace Roll in this deck just for Lele, but I, think, I don't think it's that necessary. Uh, Nest Ball gets to my fifth Pokemon, so he gets a guaranteed knockout if he can switch. Or Guzma. He's actually only down to three prizes, so we can actually very easily win this game, which is pretty scary. He already GX'd me, so he can't copy any other attacks on my board. Um, so that's interesting. Let's see if he gets the energy or a Guzma or a switch or something. I want to knock out that Zor like quickly. I think I actually knock out the other things first. I, I mean, I know he's playing DC. He hasn't found any though. I mean, he played one and, sh and Kartana earlier, so that could be a thing. Hmm. I'm just trying to think of what the best way is to approach this matchup. I, he has three abilities on the board right now. He's going to Guzma instead of Ace Roll. I'm assuming Knockout Weavile. Um, he's going for the Buzzwell. Okay, so this means that I have the possibility of of making of making a, of having a Weavile play here. So unless I just hop take a draw supporter, I definitely Ultra Ball. I think I find my last Lele. Because now this is just going to be like in range of Knockout the rest of the game. Um... He has, still has to take two prizes. This is so awkward. Okay, we Lele for Cynthia. We draw first, though, because if we don't need to put down the Lele, that's probably better. Probably, because I want to put down another Sneasel. We can find Cynthia. We don't find Cynthia. We do find DC. That's not very useful right now. Uh, and Guzma is not going to be the most useful either, so we have to just do this, unfortunately. I wanted to play down another Sneasel, but I don't think it's going to be a thing. How many items does he have in his hand? That's why I hate Copycat. Copycat's such a bad card. <laughs> It's so rare you get to actually abuse it. That's why I only play it at most as a one of now or a two of. Like two of in like decks that really need this a bunch of draw because we don't have many options. Let's right, see if we can find our unit. There we go. We even found choice band that could be useful later. We do take knockout right now though. And then he can potentially come in and knock me out in return with another Zoark, which means he has to find it. If he does that, that's not the best for us. That's like not good at all, actually. But we don't have much of an option. Like I shouldn't have played down that other Coco earlier, I think. I think I should have definitely just tried to put down as many Sneezes as possible. So that was definitely a misplay on my part with my inexperience playing this deck. Because like I said earlier, I built this deck this morning. So if he doesn't, if he somehow does not take a knockout or Weavile and doesn't knock a knockout or Lele either, uh, this is really good for us because we can just Guzma up a Coco or a... Kartana and or a Lele or a Kartana and win the game because we have choice band. So we win next turn if he doesn't judge us. Uh, although, yeah, if he doesn't, if he doesn't knock us out, judge us, or come on, oh, of course. Uh, I mean that doesn't really matter too much. The Weavile's can knock us out too though, um, and then this is a one retreat option as well. So mm, this is not looking super good. I guess he has Guzman in hand. Yeah, there it is. Man, that sucked. That was really bad for me. I definitely, definitely think I misplayed that. I should have put down more Sneasels down instead of what I did earlier. But that was, that was, ah, that was so bad. I was trying to think of ways I could have made that better for me. And just whiffing that, this is what I mean by like, if you whiff energy, if you whiff energy, then it's like super bad for you. That's why I play two Lottos. It's how I play four Lottos. I was trying to turn, treat this like Glaceon, bro, and play four Lottos. Every time you whiff energy, it's like really, really, really bad for you. And this is why I hate that Rangaroo has to be played. <laughs> I want to play Special Charge so bad and not waste a turn attacking. But it's fine. Special Charge is gone. Maybe we'll get it back someday, but not, not today. Alright, we'll play one more game though. So you got to see the good and the bad of the deck. The deck is not unbeatable, of course. You can still beat it. Uh, 
but a little bit, a little bit of luck has to be involved to find your energies. Man, that sucked though. I'm, I'm like a little bit upset. I'm a little bit salty. This is a pretty bad hand too. Mmm. Mm, it's not good. Man, if I just had that unit energy, Buzzle would have taken another knockout. And then we would have just been destroying from there. That's really upsetting. <laughs> we just found it, man. That sucks. That makes me... Oh, he's playing Garchomp. I actually really want to play Garchomp again. Like, super bad Garchomp Lucario. I actually own three Staff Lucarios uh, from that set. Because you guys know I love you, Lucario. And I was playing this deck for a while. And I love this deck so much. And now that we have Lance Prism out, I actually did trade, like, a couple packs for Lance Prism online. So I can get it. So I really want to try this deck out. So that's going to be another thing we do soon. It's the only deck from, the only quote unquote deck from uh, Dragon's Majesty I want to play. I think Dragonite is just a weaker Metagross in my opinion. Because a lot of people, like the whole concept of the deck, right? Is that you can easily get it out and then you have like Lance and um, and his GX attack to get out even more Dragons. But all you're doing is getting out either more Dragonites that are, you know, one energy beat sticks, uh, but are never taking Okos. Or getting out Altarius to increase your damage output, but not by enough, right? Because that's the only thing you can really do, quote unquote, consistently in the deck. Which is fine, but Metagross has the same HP number. His, his weakness is a little bit better because there's not many fire decks out there. And Gardevoir is being played right now. And can take Okos. All it needs is like two Metagross set up, which you play Algorithm and you it's easy enough to set up stage twos in this format. And uh, what is this? Oh, he's just getting rid of his own thing. Just to thin his hand, I guess. I'll have to play on a skateboard instead. That's cute. I wish we could play one more Pokemon down. <laughs> this is so bad. Uh, this is actually super bad. Like, oh god. This hand would have been so good if I just had one other Pokemon. I would have loved to spread this turn. I don't know if I want to attach an energy. Like, putting 30 damage on this could be nice, but I think I'd rather just Cynthia. And just try to find any other Pokemon to attach an energy to. It can escape rope and then do some spread. In best case scenario. Oh, we almost had it. This is actually, we can still get it if we just get a Ranguru down here. We'll get Sneasel because the Karyos have abilities. And Lele has an ability. So we'll get one Sneasel down. But we'll, we'll focus on the other dudes first. Um, get a Ranguru down. We can play down Shrine. Escape rope. Draw. And hopefully find something. Uh, do we escape rope? Alright, right, it gives me the one with no energies, I'll take that. That's best case scenario for me. We'll instruct here for two. We'll see what we can find. Uh, Guzma is not what I want to see. Anyway, he can knock me out next turn. If he's the fighting type Garchomp, there's a possibility. I mean, he can just knock out anything next turn in theory. Uh, probably should have got out of second Coco, but this is this will just have to do, I think. Uh, it's fine. It's alright. We'll be alright. It does suck that I drew two Guzmas, though. Acrobikes could be good in this deck. That's another card I'm trying out. Uh, I haven't found room for them yet. The problem with Acrobikes is that there's so many cards you don't want to discard in this deck that I haven't really found myself playing the Acro Bike yet. So he has two abilities on the board now. So that's really good. We can hit it for 100. It has 150 HP if I remember correctly. So if we can just get a couple turns of spread going, then Sneasels can wreck shop later. And right now he's just not doing anything. He can't get it out of the active. Uh, we can, okay, we can get down another Coco. So we got, we got slightly saved. I just need to make sure that we have constant momentum. And Lily will hopefully find me something. Okay, we got our unit energy. We got Weavile. We can actually take a knockout. We can't do much else this turn, so we might as well, to be honest. Uh, he'll come in with Garchomp, though, and that's pretty bad. If he has a Garchomp in his turn. But then again, it's bad anyways. I need more Sneasels down. I gotta start prioritizing playing down Sneasels. I think. Let's go ahead and take our prize here, because we're so super stuck if we don't do something. So we'll Evil Admonition. Alright, let's see what we can do here. There's a DC, so that's good for spreading. We're going to be playing this game a little bit behind, but it's fine because like the deck excels at playing behind because you have the ta ta Tapu Lele. And since all these Pokemon have pretty low HP, if we can, if he can just fill up his board with Pokemon and we just spread just two, two, two or three more times, okay, he's just going to get out Garchomp here. Garchomp gets him 
get some Cynthia, which means he can actually take a knockout. And we come in and we attack with Coco. He's getting the fighting type Garchomp, which is which is pretty cool, I guess. I mean, now he doesn't have to get Cynthia and he'll just take a knockout anyways. This one's weak to grass, so we can't really do much about that. We might just get Lance here, to be honest, get two more Garchomps down. That'd be like both good and bad for me. Let's see if he does it. He's just gonna get Lily. Okay, that's fine. Um, that'd be both good and bad for me because then I'd be, um, okay, he's filling up his board. That's really good for me. Cause then I'd be, have more targets to attack. All right. And then we can actually come in and take a knockout with Buzzwool. Actually, we'll be short 20, but that's fine. Yeah, we're just going to Coco here. And we continue. We can actually Guzma. Lotto is good, but not this turn. I think we Guzma up. Yolu? We can use Evil Admonition. Or a Rule of Evil. With enough. Mm, okay, we're gonna Guzma up a Gibble. I don't want that Garchomp active. It's looking pretty scary. And we'll just go ahead and flip. The, the thing with Coco with like spread decks in general is that you really need a lot of experience playing these decks. They, they, they involve so much long-term thinking. And hand Hammer, that's annoying. Um, he's, he's playing the Hand Hammer. This man teched out his list. It's kind of crazy. It's hard to tech out this deck because you want to consistently get out your Pokemon. Hmm. He put down another Gibble. So if he can't, if he can't retreat this turn and take a knockout, it's really good for me because that gives me an extra turn to, I mean, obviously he's going to be able to because of Lucario, but um, it's really good for me because that's more damage on the board. Like right now, I already have, ooh, is he going, is he going to, what's he going to do here? It's a 70, 20, 40, 60, 80. That's 150 damage right now. He's going to lose me. Okay. He's going for a rank group. That's really good. That's really good for my opponent. Um, that's a really strong play on their part because that means I have a lot less consistency. But I'm going to do my best to continue adding up damage on the board. Well, actually, I should probably attack with this, huh? Oh, Lele right now is just, it's just too soon for Lele right now. We'll see what we get here. That's just DC. Okay, so we're not playing Lele right now. I'm just stuck, man. I can force him to attach more energies in different places, I guess. Like I can, I can force him to attach something to Riolu to retreat. I just have to get lucky. Yeah. I think it's our only play really is just to try to get as lucky as possible. I was hoping to get the unit energy as well, but we didn't get it. So Buzzwell is now kind of pointless. And we'll just flying flip. So if he keeps his things as babies, right? We can actually take a bunch of knockouts. We already have five prizes. We have to take five more. So um, this will eventually be knocked out. I guess he's going to get a second Lucario, maybe. I, I don't know why he hasn't done that yet. It's, pro it's probably prize, to be honest, if he hasn't gotten it yet. There's a Cynthia. All right, let's see what we can do. So he has 40, 60, 100, 140, 180, uh, 290. And that's going to be two, that's going to be 300 damage. That's two Garchomp knockouts, uh, which is pretty good. But do I want to talk out in two Garchomps? I could always, I could take out three Pokemon. Um, I'm just trying to think of like how I'm going to approach this matchup right now. This is looking kind of rough. Oh my god, this is what I mean by like sometimes Shrine is just a bad card, and this is just a prime example of what I mean. We're so, like, because like they get stuck in your hands so often, and there's not much I can do about it. I'm just going to stay here and pass until something good happens. I can take four prizes if I just move some damage onto this, and then, or two prizes, and then two more. I wish I could flank flip some more. Okay, so I think we, I mean, we can still win. That's the thing is that that's the thing that can still happen is that we can still win. He's not Guzmaing this turn. Um, so as long as we can just find like a good card this turn, we have we have Ultra Ball as an option. Um, the blower is okay because we can play down to the shrine. 
Uh, although it does put us a small bit of damage behind. We have Ultra Ball that we can still find. Uh, Stretcher gets us another Oranguru. We can still get Counter Energy and knock out the Garchomps, but then he just comes in and knocks us out in return. Uh, but we can find another Stretcher and then do it again. He's not playing any of the Dragon one, which I'm surprised about because like this seems like the perfect deck to play Lance in. I guess this is like before he gets Lance. I, that's pretty fair. I mean, it did just come out, so. Uh, all right, let's see. We need a top deck right now. <sighs> well, guys, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we don't got him. We don't got him. Uh, we, we have one more turn of greatness that awaits us. Just one more turn. We can top deck right now and then lose. He doesn't play Diancie either. If he knocks out Lele, then we have to draw like a god. We have to get draw supporter. If we can get like, if we can get a copycat, like right now would be the turn to play copycat. If we can, then we can like, cause we can still reverse sweep. We have all the damage with that flying flip. We have enough damage on the board to reverse sweep, but we need to top deck. Like this is fine. Cause like I said, we still need to top deck no matter what. We have to make sure we get a draw supporter. We have to get copycat into um, copycat rescue stretcher counter energy. We still have our other rescue stretcher in the deck. We still have both of our counter energies in the deck and extra lotto and just plenty of draw support, bro. We got the options. Now we don't need copycat. Now we need Cynthia, which is, and it decreases our chances altogether, which is annoying. Um, but we have, we, we have, the, he didn't even take a knockout here. Dude, shout out to that, bro. Oh my god, come on game. Just just give me one turn. Just give me one turn of just something. We're gonna remove so much damage off the board now, but this is uh this is so upsetting. This is just so upsetting. This is very upsetting. We're gonna take two prizes here, so I guess game change. This game is changing. Uh, can we get something off this? We only have to take three knockouts. There should be damage on the board that can do something, maybe. There's 60, 120. That's already a knockout right there. 60, 100, 160. That's two knockouts. We're still short one, so... Uh, I don't think we can win at all. Because no matter what, he can just get down to this idea. We can knock out both Lucario's and Judge with, with the best top deck in the entire world. But that's the best we can do. Man, this is just, this is what I mean. Like, I want, this is why you have to play high draw counts. Him knocking out a Rangu was so good for my opponent. Like, it was just, this, all I could say is I was really just that good. But let's see if we can get extraordinarily lucky here. Nope. Uh, there's nothing we can do. At all. That was very sad. <laughs> that was very sad. That was extremely sad. That was as sad as it gets. There's nothing we could do. We could flip and take no knockouts. <laughs> Only I have enough bad luck to never find a draw supporter or an ultra ball to get me a Lele. But that's going to be the deck, guys. I, I think I think every now and then it's okay to uh, upload a video that's me going, yep, that was very sad. <laughs> that's going to be the deck. I think the deck list is fine. I could see you adding another copycat because, like I said earlier, if you really need a draw support, that's something. But copycat is just such a weak draw supporter. Um... I'm never really a huge fan of advocating it. I, the only thing I can say is that instead of drawing cards that could help me, I drew Shrine of Punishments. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, the matchup would have been okay if we just had that swing turn. It's not exactly difficult to find your counter energies when you're playing two Lottos. I can see you increasing your Lotto count as well. Uh, Cause I found I just found that I really like Lotto in these kind of decks. After playing like in, after playing in Glaceon and like testing Glaceon for three hours on stream, and we just kept increasing our Lotto count until it turned out to the Glaceon video that you guys saw the other day. Um, I'm always like a huge advocate of just playing higher counts of Lotto because it's just such a good card, especially in these decks where you need those turns to find the right cards. It also helps you just thin in general, which is nice. Uh, I could, like I said earlier, I can always see you decreasing the Shrine of Punishment count to three or two, but the problem with that is that you really need to find the Shrine of Punishment's early game in so many matchups if you want to win. But you can also make the argument that if you're playing 
if you're if, if you're playing what you're expected to be playing evil admonition is enough so though you can risk dropping the uh, um the the uh the punishment count it's a solid argument i think i'd prefer finding it earlier though because that means you have more options like the deck becomes more versatile and it becomes a spreader it, the spread option becomes stronger you i can see you decreasing the dc count and increasing this count but like i said coco is just so viable vi valuable in this game that i don't really want to do that um it also means that you have more you have better options to attack with lele so there's a bunch of different arguments you can make for the deck list. let me know what you guys think down below i think the deck is still very good it does beat it it's comfortably beats the best decks in the format we can say that at least Obviously, we just played against a Garchomp Lucario deck, which is not the best deck in format by any means, as much as I love the deck. <laughs> which I will do be doing a profile for that soon, a Malmar deck soon. There's a bunch of different decks I want to do soon. So I'm going to stream a bunch and hopefully we can get those decks tested. And we can. This is why I like to properly test my decks before I, uh, before I record them. I like to do at least two hours, three hours of testing before I record a deck. Just because, you know. It gives me it gives better content for you guys but this morning i really want to play this like in theory this deck is good we got to show off how good it is in the matchup so i'm happy with how this deck turned out let me know what you guys think down below don't forget to drop a like subscribe share all that good jazz and i'll see you guys next time peace